Welcome to the Evolve WMMA podcast featuring women who go against conventional thinking to pursue their dreams. These fighters inspire, empower, and unleash excellence within a new generation of female warriors as they rise and evolve into the best possible versions of themselves through the power of mixed martial arts. Hey, 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 this is Evolve WMMA, and I'm your host, Shelly Devine. My next guest is a mother of two boys and a gymnast working in child youth services. She is also serving our country in the Army National Guard in Fort Leavenworth, Missouri. And she's close to acquiring her BA in therapeutic recreation with a minor in health science. She is an experienced Muay Thai kickboxer holding titles in three different weight classes. And she has an amateur MMA record of two and one. She'll be making her pro debut at Invicta 33, where she'll be facing Ashlyn Page Kleinbeck. I'd like to welcome to the show, Chantel Killer Coats. Welcome to the show, Chantel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank You've been you. rushing around. Yes, I have. Sorry. Yeah, they called me in to help out the youth center, so kind of like, uh, made my day a little busy. I can imagine. It sounds like you're very busy. You're in school. You're a fighter. You take care of two boys, and and you're in the National Guard. Yes, yes, I am. That's a that's like I mean like a juggling act. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. <laughs> so, what got you into um, martial arts? Um, you know, I, I always just love to. Um, I love wrestling. I love like just playing around. And um, I joined a gym, and it was connected to Glory Gym. So I um, started this just for a workout, and I just loved it. I just, like, loved it. Automatically, just loved it. And how long have you been involved in martial arts? So this is my fourth year now. So I've been in it for four years, so in Muay Thai. So this is only the, um, I started doing mixed martial arts for only two years. Uh-huh. Well, I, I saw some uh, fights of yours. You're, you're a very accomplished uh, Muay Thai kickboxer. You, you've had quite a few bouts, and you are um, a champion in, in different divisions, like uh, yes. different weight classes. Yes, I sure am, yes. So how, well, like cutting weight, and what's, what's your walk-around weight? Uh, my walk-around weight now is like 137. Okay, so then you could drop, and you could, go, you, you could drop to 125 e- easily. What was, what was the one, did you go to 115 or was it 125, 135, and 145? 125, 135, and 145. Wow, oh, that's cool. That's very cool. The 145 is when I kind of, when I first started. Mm-hmm. And that just continued to train. So it, it's hard for me to get to 145 again, but at least to walk around like that. I just kind of stay at 135 now. Yeah, so you have, um, this fight that's coming up was scheduled for September. Yes, it was. And um, your opponent had um, an appendectomy, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Poor girl. Right, you know, like, even as an amateur, we were supposed to fight in July, and it rained out. Oh. So, the same same opponent? Same, same opponent, yep. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we've been trying to fight each other for a while. <laughs> and, and you are from the same, from the same town, both of you, are right? Is that uh, correct? From the same state. We're okay. coming from, yeah, she's from like, um, uh, Flint something, so more like a couple hours away from me. And, and have you seen her fight at all? Because uh, it looked like you, you both had fought for the same promotion in that state, in, in Missouri. Yeah, I've seen her fight, um, her last, I think her last opponent, Sierra Girl. I mm-hmm. did see that fight. I think we was on the same car that fight. Ah, so do you, how do you feel like uh, you, you two match up? Um, I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm more of a, I'm more of an aggressive person, but you know, she's, she's a, has a good ground game and I have a good stand up game. So I think it'd be fun. And I've been really working hard on my ground. So, um, 
I'm really to, ready to like put it to work. Yeah. Kind of anxious about it, you know, really, yeah. really anxious. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really quite um, a big event for you. I mean, you're going on, <laughs> on TV live right. and um, it's Invicta. So it's your Invicta debut, not to yeah. mention that it's your pro debut. So that's a that's like a, a big spoonful. <laughs> it is, it is. I'm so grateful that you know I got this opportunity. So yeah. I'm just gonna make the best of it. Yeah, congratulations. That is, I mean, it really is to to do your pro debut that way too, as well. Um so um Let's, let's get into, like, I, I, I sent you um, a bunch of questions and stuff to kind of prep you a little bit, but um, I'd like to, I like our fight fans uh, to get to know you a little bit better as a fighter, as a mom, as a person, um, what you do outside of the ring or cage. So um, can you give us a little background about what your daily life might, by, might be like? Yeah, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty busy, but it's kind of like focused, you know. My main point is um it's all wellness. And what I mean by that is like uh like I wake up, you know, I say my prayers, it's my spiritual point. Um I like to stay in the positive mood. I you know, I state like my goals, my affirmations of like who I am and where I want to go in life. And then um I listen to some type of motivation speaking. Um, you know, like 30 minutes and then like wait, then I go run. <laughs> I don't know, like my cardio has to be in there. It's like the motion that changed my emotions, you know, sets the day for me. That's kind of like sets the tone. Then I wake up, I take my son to school, then I train, then I go to school, and then I train my second session, then I I teach gymnastics, and then I come home and I have that actually, sometimes I do a night training sometimes I don't it depends mm -hmm. and then I just go home that's my daily so yeah you're you're like up in the morning do 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 and then and yeah, then I'm more at home and then oh, nap yeah, time. <laughs> yeah. wow wow that sounds like a very busy day if that's your your normal routine I'm like yeah yeah, that's a lot, especially yeah. school. Um, yes, your your passion is is fit, fitness and wellness. Um, how did you how did you uh, get involved in that? Was there any like you know anything that kind of inspired you or motivated you early on in, in before you even decided to get into that that um, profession? Um, I feel like it changed my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just trying to share my experience and um, and help others. So I, you know, I think I kind of just struggled in a standpoint what I wanted to do with my life and what I wanted to be and who I am. Mm -hmm. And um, once I start to work out and do something that I like to do mm -hmm. and like things start to just come to me, you know, I start to feel better about myself. I have more confidence to do things I want to do. Mm -hmm. I started wanting to seek other things. I wanted to learn mm -hmm. more. I wanted to eat better. So I felt like that is like the foundation of success is um is you being healthy feeling good about who you are as a person yeah was there a period of time where you didn't feel good about who you were oh yeah it was yeah I started because I was in a really kind of a bad relationship mm -hmm. and it was kind of abusive like physically mentally and I really just felt weak as a person because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a teenage mom so I have a teenage mom of two kids so I got pregnant at 16 17 then I got pregnant, married when I was 18, divorced when I was 19. So kind of like lived my life backwards. So then I did that. And then I had this bad relationship and I just kind of just felt like a weak person. You know, I just, you know, I just, uh, just felt weak. Like I was, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything right. So mm -hmm. um, I was kind of overweight. I was like almost 200 pounds. So mm -hmm. I think I started at 187, 187. So I just started working out and that's when, you know, I found martial arts and that's what just made me feel good because I was pretty good at it, you know, and it just made me feel strong and confident as a female and I just ran with it. Wow. Um, when, when you, I'm going to dig a little deeper if you don't mind. Um, when, when you were feeling weak, what did you attribute that to was, I mean, you said you were in a, an abusive relationship, but 
getting into an abusive relationship, was there anything prior to that that you kind of, oh, I think I'll go in this direction because I feel a little bit better at the time, and then you realize this isn't what I want. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, what was the what was kind of the um, the progression there for you to go I, from weak to you know who you are now? You know, yeah, I kind of I guess I sometimes I just, I didn't really know my worth, so I felt like. Uh, the status I was in is what I deserved. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, I'm, I didn't feel like I was deserving of anything else than where I was. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and um, I kind of just was just stuck there because I, um, I didn't feel like people understood, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, I just kind of make excuses for where I want to stand at, where I was at, you know, mm -hmm. that's how I was in life. Yeah. Did you, um, religion or, or God is a big part of your life. I, I saw a lot of quotes, um, yeah. from the Bible and I mean, was that something that you had as a child and all through or, or was it something new that you found? Um, it's something I, I always had God in my life. I always had like Bible studies and stuff with my mom mm -hmm. and my, I had a Bible studies teacher lady come with, oh, Oh, sorry. Hello. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. And, you know, and I just, so I had that habit and that, that practice in it. And, but, you know, I kind of just kind of got away from it and just like live life. And then um, came back to it on my own and realized that all through my struggles and all the problems that I have, it was always God who brought me through it. And even with my success today, um, God is still one who brings me through it mm -hmm. and guides my steps to all of it. Mm -hmm. Were there any pivotal moments that really transformed? I mean, like from you going from one, you know, weak situation or, or being in a place that you didn't want to be in and then, you know, um, you know, finding martial arts, what, what was the, 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 the transition? How was that? Um, I, I just feel so free when I do my martial arts, you know, it's not, I'm not really, thinking about life I'm living just there in that moment and just I don't know it's, it's my expressions I guess how I I can just express how I feel mm -hmm. and not and not take things personally because you know you can't be that emotional fighter and you got to really learn how to control it and, and know how to transform form it to something beautiful mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah, I do know, but it's it's always interesting hearing um, another woman's story and how it's it it's helped empower her and strengthen her um, in in the way in, in 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 becoming even a better person. I think people sometimes look at martial arts and like you're a girl, you shouldn't be fighting, you know. Oh, like <laughs> I hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time, and yeah. You know, and I, and I, and for a while that did bother me, like recently, because, you know, I want to live right and I want to make sure my role, what I'm doing as a female is right. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I look at nature, I look at history, and if it wasn't for a lot of these females, you know, the world wouldn't be what it was today. And I believe that, you know, it's men and female that lives in this world. So it means men and female influence to change it, to make it better. So I, um, I just stand confident in what I do and um, you know, know that it's very necessary now that I continue to be the best me. Right, right, that's great. So can you share a personal or a, a, a habit or a daily routine that contributes to your success in being um, a fighter or overall throughout your entire life being a mom? Um, I, think, I, I think the most important thing that uh, I learned from this, or I routine that I do is just continue to always learn, be open to learn, uh, to be flexible, to be, you know, things. Things is always changing, it's always something new, and willing to know and be have a seat. That's, I feel like that's like the biggest thing for me. Mm. Was just learning and applying new things and being comfortable for who I am. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, what are the, do you have, um, what are your goals for the next, say, maybe three years, personal and um, professional? Um, I want to finish school. I want to graduate. Mm -hmm. um, I want to have, 
my youth wellness program where I can have, like, I, you know, I just want to function under a really good one where I help children, um, you know, to deal with themselves, self esteem learn how to cook, understand the process of life, and learn from them to learn how to express themselves in a positive way. Mm -hmm. I really want that. And um, I want to make it in UFC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are my goals. That's cool. Um, can you share um, a time, a story of a time in your journey as a martial artist when you had an aha moment? Um, you know, I, like I think every camp, every new, every time I uh, train for a new fight, which is like every two months. It's like another aha, like, oh, okay, I understand this now. Oh, okay, I understand what you guys mean by that now. And it's mostly, it's like, um, like right now, my aha moment is living in the moment, you know, not worrying about what the man is in, not worrying about what people are going to think, not worrying about any status, or, you know, really being in that fight for me, living in the moment, because they never know what's going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's like, okay. Now that I'm practicing it and I'm understanding that, that's more of my aha right now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I listen to a lot of Bruce Lee podcasts, so I'm like, oh, okay, Sam, he's saying now. <laughs> right, right. Do you, do you have, like, um, what's your why? Like, why do you do what you do? You know Simon Sinek? Do you know yes. Him? Yes, and he, I mean, he says you must have a why. Um, you know, f to, to stay inspired, to stay motivated, even when you're not, what would you say your why is? My why is my why, my why that I do martial arts is because it's the, um, I need it for me. Like I need it. That would, this, it makes me happy. It's like my work, you know, mm. my work is my way. <laughs> Yeah. You're, you know, it's funny that you say that because I said that years ago, this is my work. This right. is my work. And I remember when I said it out loud to other people, they just looked at me like I was nuts. I'm yeah. like, do you ever get like a crazy reaction? No, it's my work. This is yeah. my work. This is what I'm meant to do. <laughs> and that's what I believe freedom is. It's the, the ability to, um, to live your purpose here. Mm -hmm. And that's that's and I and, and I really value work and hard work and this yeah. is what it is for me. Yeah. You know, I feel like um, that's what, I feel like that's what I'm really known for is my effort and my hard work. Mm -hmm. So so important. Um, who would you say has played a meaningful role in your life's journey? and influenced you in a positive way in life or more like in martial arts it could be in life because i, I think it all kind of is connected so okay. um i have my mom my mom's very motivating uh, my mom is also a uh, a, a teenage parent and uh, but she has six kids and it just amazed me how she can I have two and I struggle and I'm just like, how does she ever do this? And um, she's a very hardworking woman and mm -hmm. she's still very supportive. Like without my mom, like I wouldn't be able to do none of this that I do. And so every time I, I get tired or I want to stop, I just see how she did it. And so it's just very motivating. My mom is, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, in martial arts, like uh, my teammates, um, Willie and Damian, there's just, they're the one who kind of introduced me into martial arts and uh, just seeing them like make this their lifestyle, always watching them on it, studying on it, how they eat. And yeah. it just really inspired me. Like I said, that work ethic, like I just really enjoyed it. Yeah. So those are the people who I feel like are very motivating. Also my head coach, Master Dwayne Lewis, just like the most people, humble person I ever met in my life. You know, it's like a father to me. And, mm -hmm. um, his aura is just very beautiful. And those are just like people that very motivate me. So. Very cool. Wow. That's awesome. It's nice. Your mom will enjoy hearing that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? She'll be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it all I'm, about, you know, I'm, all I'm, these I'm, years. Yes. 
<laughs> you do appreciate me. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what has been your greatest challenge when dealing with fear and how have you overcome it? Fear. My, 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 I think my greatest challenge is just really um, letting myself go, like surrendering myself to anything that I want to do, just giving myself all. And, you know, I still struggle with that. And so what I do is, um, I, like I said, I read a lot. So there's a book, it's called um, Build the Fear and Do It Anyways. And it gave me like a project where it, it tells me to um, do little small goals. And it's called, and make like a power chart. And every little goal, I, I tell myself like, good job, you did this, you did this. So I can always reflect on the stuff that I already done. And it helps me just to go through it. I just do stuff like just anything that will make me scared, like roller coasters, anything that I want to do, mm -hmm. just do it. Just so I can have that on my resume. Hey, I done it so I can just go on with life. Just go do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do something that scares you every day, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wow. That's really good. Um, can you share a story along your journey where you experienced failure and what you learned from that? Yeah. Well, my last fight that I just took was my first MMA loss. Um, was probably like the hardest, hardest loss. It was it was really hard for me. But you know, I I thought I'll let down my coaches, um, my fans, myself because I didn't do me. I didn't. I kind of kind of just kind of gave up you know I didn't do I don't know all that I don't know I was really heartbroken and but that fight I learned so much that I'm more I'm I even though I am a fighter but I'm more than a fighter too you know I'm just, I still have to love me regardless and um you know I learned that and you know to be patient you know um I learned that you know, it's okay. And you know, I'm thankful for that. I learned what I need to work on. Uh, and I learned that I need to be fighting for me. Like, live, like I said, living in that moment mm -hmm. and not fighting for them. Even though I love my coaches and I love my fans and everything, but I have mm -hmm. to do it for me. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that's, I just feel like that's the biggest lesson that I learned out of that failure. Um, I know when, when you fail, you ponder. When you win, you celebrate. So mm -hmm. it was a good time for me really sit down and really look at myself and who I am as a fighter, fighter and what I really wanted to become. Um, mm -hmm. I really, that really changed my life, made me really want to focus, be more focused on what I wanted to do. I felt like that fight kind of described my life. It was kind of chaotic. Like, you know, this coach, this coach here, I had a wrestling coach. I had, you know, I had all, I didn't know who to listen to. It was, mm -hmm. it was kind of like how my training was as well. And so, mm -hmm. and you know, I was like, okay, I have to know my result, what I want, and plan for that way, you know? And that's where I mm -hmm. learned to do a lot of goal planning. Mm -hmm. Like, it really changed my life <laughs> within yeah. two months. It was like a big yeah. change, so, you know. Yeah, it sounds like you, you perhaps were struggling with an internal struggle prior to going in that fight because you had a lot of information coming in. You were taking in a lot of information, and then you're trying to um, – decipher it all while you're in the cage <laughs> you know with whatever you were learning okay i gotta do wrestling now like this is the this is the, the amazing thing about mixed martial arts you're learning so many different techniques yeah. or yeah. arts i mean primarily you studied muay thai kickboxing is that correct yeah so you would i mean you you very much have focused on that and you've only been involved in the martial arts for four years right period yeah so, and then you're learning MMA. So you're learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do. I do American Jiu Jitsu. American Jiu Jitsu. Okay. I, some, you know, it's yeah, um, yeah. So I do. My coach is this. He's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu too. So it's kind of like the mix of it. Uh huh. Um, so kind of the mix of it, but yeah. So I mean, that's a that's a that's a whole other. A whole other art so you're i mean taking in all that information and then stepping foot into the cage and and fighting and then trying to figure out okay what is going to be yeah the best you know, me how am i going to be as a fighter that's that's a lot 
Yeah, it was. And then, you know, and I think I kind of just rushed it. You know, um, it wasn't even, you know, she didn't even make weight. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses for myself or anything like that, but I was just so out of here. I'm just going to take it because, you know, the other, my September fight got canceled. My fight in July got canceled. Mm -hmm. Like, all these fights were getting canceled. And, you know, and I was just, I'm going to take it, you know, and I'm like, I have to do this for my fans, you know, I'm, I'm still going to do it. And ah. it wasn't, it wasn't. It probably wasn't right for you at the time. The universe was probably telling you, no, hold up, wait, wait a little bit, you know, <laughs> get a little more, get a little more training in or something like that, maybe. Yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, more, yeah. Yeah, but, I, you know, I'm glad it did. I kind of showed me where I was and what I needed to work on. So it is trusting yourself and listening to that inner voice. You kind of learned that through this, yeah. this recent loss. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's cool. That's a big lesson. Yeah, it was. It was a big lesson. Yeah. yeah. I was down for a while though. I'm not I'm I did just learn it. <laughs> yeah. Did any other fighters like, you know, any um old older uh uh female veterans um have you ever looked at any of them as inspiration to um becoming a fighter? You know, not, you know, I don't, I really don't have like a, a female role model when it's fighting. The only one I always wanted to be was more of like a WWE. Like, I really love China. Yeah. So they always call me China Miss Little because I always want to be a WWE fighter. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's, that's the only one that I, I, you know, I admire, I guess. Well, there's a lot of women that, that started out doing, you know, martial arts and then they're, they're going to WWE. I, I know one, like the boss there, um, Mercedes, uh, well, that actually, that, that's not her name. That's not her stage name. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, Rhonda Rousey. Well, Rhonda is, but, the, but, uh, there's, um, Mercedes uh, Verano or whatever, but she's um, oh gosh, what's her stage name? Oh my God, I'm I'm terrible. I'm I'm total because I know her as Mercedes, but she's the boss. She's the girl with the purple hair. She was the champ, like uh, in oh, raw right. and stuff. Like you know, they just came to Kansas City last month, and yeah. I don't to see them. And they had like the the females revolution is Ronda Rousey, you know. This yeah, year. yeah. And I was just so inspired, like that just got me going. Yeah, she's <laughs> and great. I, was like, there. I don't know if this is a trend or is it, it is a sign, but I'm gonna take it and go with it. Yeah, it was, it was so empowering. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, you could take your career, you know, like, I mean, yeah. you can go either MMA or you could go WWE now. There's just <laughs> there's an opportunity there, yeah. you know, and I think even for Ronda Rousey, it was her, you know, like, I think realistically, that was probably her real passion was to do that. And she kind of inspired me because, you know, you know, whatever you focus on kind of comes to true. And she, her biggest fear was like to lose and her fear yeah. it just came true so i'm like oh, i learned a lot from that you know not to be not to even think that way yeah so, yeah the law of attraction you know, i feel like she she's overcoming it and hmm. i guess in a way so yeah you get to watch the, the uh the veterans there that have been in and it for a while and see how they progress and then you can kind of gauge yourself a little bit it's like oh it's yeah all, Oh, that's what she's contending with, which is huge, especially when you get like well known, like right, you know, right. the, all the media. I mean, like this, even this. I mean, yeah. like oh, you know, you're on a podcast now, so people are gonna know who you are. You know, you, know. you get scared, and some people will be like, oh well, we're gonna see this chick fight. She's a hottie, you know. Like <laughs> let's watch her. You know, that's what the guys are gonna say. You know, <laughs> I'm like, but it's it's like oh, okay. Let's let's see where this goes, and and you you never really know. Um, other other you know platforms will pick you up. You're I, you have a great website, you know, for somebody who's a beginner. Thank you. <laughs> for a beginner, most of most yeah. of them don't. They don't have anything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you're still you're still technically an amateur. So yeah. Good. yeah. yeah. <laughs> You got two weeks, uh, less than two weeks away, and right, you know. Yeah.
Very cool. <laughs> Still seems so real. So how did your folks toughen you up as a kid? Like to, to be like this, this, this woman that is, was brave enough to go into, uh, you know, a, a, an MMA gym and, or a Muay Thai gym and start taking classes. Oh, so my mom loves to fight too. I fight with her all the time. She's the main one who like, like pushed me into this, you know, she just loves it. It's like her dream. And I don't know, my whole family is very athletic. They're very athletic, very competitive. Like your family reunions is always some type of competition. So they just love, love, love it. So that's awesome. Yeah, my I have a big my family supports me a lot. They come to all my fights and everything. So, hmm. so I only have one brother. And the rest of us I have are four sisters. I have four sisters and one brother. So. Oh yeah, so I can see there could be a lot of physicality there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I grew up I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Even my youngest sister, my youngest sister is a Down syndrome, but she's very athletic too. She gets like all these gold medals and track and stuff. She's wow. really <laughs> yeah, so. so you're raising, are you having like a, a, a fundraiser for her or for um, just in general? So October is, um, was October is like Down syndrome awareness month. So they do like a walk. So yes, that was one of my charities that I, I do for her in Down syndrome. That's awesome. So they it'll, it like raise money for like prom and like little activities and stuff for them for them to do. So yeah. So that's, that's what awesome. we're doing. That's very cool. Now will will your whole family be like on at at the Invicta show to watch your fight? Will they all be going? Yes. Even a lot of them flew down or flying down to come see the site. So I'm pretty excited for that. That's that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Pretty awesome. Um, so is there anything that like keeps you up at night? Um, can be good or bad. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, like at Christmas, you know, I used to be up. Yeah, what am I, I gonna get? <laughs> you know? I like to sleep, so I go I go sleep late. But I wake up early, you know. Um, one time I'm like we'll stay up or get something if I feel like I need to do something like uh, I like to have everything done at night so I don't have to stress about it the next day <laughs> so like I like watching stuff watching film a lot then I go to sleep dreaming about me fighting <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> I used to have fight dreams yeah, battling. Right? Do you do you, do you have those? Do you have those dreams where you're battling in in your dream and you're like either you know, and I mean it gets like crazy too. Like you're doing stuff that you're like, how did I do that? <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. Have you had those dreams? Yeah, I have those dreams a lot. Oh, Almost every night I dream about fighting. Even when I daydream, sometimes when I pray, I'm thinking about fighting. I'm just like, oh, I can't stop. I just I don't know. I'm just so obsessed with it. That's awesome. That's good. Obsession is good, you know, yeah. if it's in a good thing, you know, <laughs> like in a good thing. That's great. Yeah. Um, so how do you see yourself as a role model to young girls or women? Um, I see myself as a, um, a role model that, you know, I think I go against the grain of what what they say a female should be. And I felt like I handled it pretty well and know that um, you can do anything you want to do and that um, the purpose of a female is very powerful, you know, regardless of what they decide to do. And that, uh, you know, that our, our role matters too. You know, this, 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 this role needs females. And so I just want them to know that they are just as much as supporting as anyone else. Hmm. Have you ever been told that you couldn't do something because you were female? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, and I, but I get it a whole lot more from females though, you know, like a lot of people think I'm too independent. I'm not enough. I'm not very submissive. Like, you know, I need to, or what I'm doing is too violent, but I was like, I'm in the military too. I don't know what the difference is, but you know, they don't, you know, it's just, 
I think it's just change is kind of different for people, but it's necessary and it's going to happen. So, um, know, what do you think? What do you think when they say that you're too submissive? What do you, how does that, how do you translate that? Like when they say that, like in, in your mind, like, okay, I'm submissive. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not submissive. I mean, like I'm not submissive enough, meaning like, you know, to be in a relationship with a man or is it to, you know, be in a position at, you know, whatever job that you're doing or, you know, like, how do you, I can't even like, I can't interpret it really. But when you, when so you I, I, I had the same problem, I had even break down what the word mean. And I was like, well, you know, sub needs to be under and that means somebody's mission. And like, you know, I really don't have no one It's really just to me. And so I have to do what makes me happy. And I feel like once you're whole, you will make whole decisions. You know, you kind of make decisions based on your status. So I don't, I feel like I devoted most of my life to things that didn't matter. So I decided to devote my life to, that's why you see that's my quote, my, my thesis, my statement is, you know, seek the kingship of God first and then you apply all my desires. So that's all I did. And then this was came to me, you know, this what makes me happy. This is what makes me make good decisions. I'm, I'm more clear when I, you know, do my work, you know, God gave work before he gave anything else. So that's how, that's how I made, that's how I made sense of it. And uh, sometimes people don't understand because it's not for them to understand. It's just for me to do. And through my actions and through my work and through my progress, then they will have a change. If not, they'll just be left behind. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That's really great. I, I love that. <laughs> like, you know, you gotta, you gotta know you, what you, what your purpose is and you gotta, feel your way I think at right. times through yes. it and yes. if it, yes and I think and that's a great way to identify whether something's for you or not for you right and and I think you know there there are times when being submissive is is okay it's it, yeah. it, maybe that's not the correct term maybe it's being vulnerable yeah you know depending on what is occurring I you know like I mean if you're in a life or death (laughs) you know situation then of course that's not going to be but if you're if you're in a relationship with somebody and knowing how to you know um communicate through Mm -hmm. vulnerability is fine but being submissive where it's going to hurt you in some way or, or somehow and I think that or, or diminish you or, or, you know, you're going to lose respect somehow or, and I think women get that confused and, and, and seeing you do what you do as a fighter and going from say, you know, your earlier years where you said you felt weak and Mm -hmm. now that you're more, you feel more empowered and strong and powerful by taking the reins of your, your life and taking control of your life. Um, I can see how some people wouldn't understand that, but I also can see how it enlivens you and makes you feel happy and more joyful. And yeah, I mean, who would want to be there? Who wouldn't yeah. want to be there, right? That's right, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, can you share something no one knows about you? Um, <laughs> let's see. I feel like an open book. I talk a lot. I I like to talk about me. So (laughs) let's see something that no one knows about you. Um, Could be like a silly little quirk or something, you know, like favorite movie or (laughs) something uh, before your fight. I, somebody told me they knit. (laughs) I crochet. I like to crochet. (laughs) But I can only make a straight line. I can only make necklaces. <laughs> That's all I can make. But yeah, I want. I love watching dog video. I think I watch a funny dog video almost every day. Like I don't know. I just love them. <laughs> so. Oh, I think I saw you're you're yeah. a, you you like fart jokes and stuff or party humor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah I like to laugh. It's funny. <laughs> and I love when I hear other people laugh. It will always makes me laugh and I don't know why but I just love laughs <laughs> so oh, I it's think contagious that's yeah okay okay yeah because I love that um do you have a favorite meal before um 
after your weight cutting? Do you have a favorite meal like prior to your fight? I like pizza. I like now. I like pizza, pasta, spaghetti. <laughs> Everybody wants those carbs. Yeah, I like those carbs. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, would you care to give a shout out to anybody um, or anyone while we wrap this up? This is great talking to you, but I, I want to let you go. It, I've had John for about 45 minutes and I'm sure oh, you have okay. two boys to get to. And I appreciate yeah. having you on the show, getting to know you, Chantel. But oh, uh, yeah. this is like your little wrap up now. You can okay. say whatever, you know, like if you have any sponsors or anything like that, or you want to give any shout outs or even talk about your upcoming fight. And how you see oh, yes. fight going on in um, Ashland. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Um, so I have an upcoming fight. It's going to be December 15th. Uh, you can get your tickets at Chickenfly, promo code COATS. Um, I like to just give a shout out to um, Blue Corner uh, for they're one of my sponsors, my managers. And they got a fight December 8th. So if you're free, go to that as well. Um, Lucette Hairs, uh, she did my hair for me and gave me great products. So she's another one of my sponsors. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my family, uh, my sons. They said I never shot them out. So Sean and Charmon, I love you guys. Mm -hmm. And my coach, Dwayne, Deb, Coach Tony, Damian, and all my friends and my fans and everybody who supports me thank you for everything you do and all my church um rock ministries they always um support me and always there for me and six o'clock prayer call so thank you guys for all of that and thank you for having me and thank you Evicta, for this opportunity and um but sorry it's gonna be a short fight so we've done in first round so <laughs> and so thank you again for having me Oh, it was awesome getting to know you, Chantel. I'm looking forward to seeing you fight at Invicta in, in about, I think it's like almost two weeks. So um, best of luck and have a safe fight camp. And, um, and hopefully a Ashland too does, it has a safe fight camp. Yes, yeah. She's a very nice girl. So yes. Yeah. And her family yeah. too. I think her, her dad's military as well. So we all can be bored. They're all super happy. Yeah, and I'm glad she's so better. Yeah, three times is a charm, so it's gonna yes, be awesome. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Chantel, and okay. good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. So keep an eye out for Chantel Killer Coats, who will be making her pro debut this December 15th at Invicta 33, where she will be facing. Ashlyn Kleinbeck. It's been a long overdue waiting for this fight to happen, so tune in on Fight Pass. If you like what you heard and are eager to hear more, remember to subscribe or download on iTunes and leave us an awesome review that helps people find the show. And remember, you can listen while doing other things, you can find us on Podomatic, Shout Engine, and Spotify at Evolve Women's MMA. And if you prefer to watch, you can find us at YouTube now at Women's MMA. Or you can simply follow us at Facebook.com backslash I love WMMA. This is Shelley Tavine. Until next time, thanks for listening.